Now for focus groups, these are a small group, small group that is invited to participate in a structured discussion with a facilitator. Now they are carefully selected participants who contribute to open discussions on an issue. Now the pros include, it's a flexible format for discussion. It supports group brainstorming and group consensus. It enables HR to learn about employee needs and opinions, and it gives employees direct input. Now the disadvantages of focus groups is, it tends to foster group think, where everyone wants to just think the same, speak the same, and not want to be the outlier or the one saying something divergent or different or diverse from what every other person has said. And I may be difficult to control a focus group if participants go off on tangents. It generally does not allow for deep discussions and it can provide skewed or biased results if participants are not representative of the population. Okay. Now, other advantages of focus groups just right here on the right here. It facilitates exploration. You can have open-ended questions. Um, you can capture participants' perspectives. And then it also captures nuances. So those open-ended questions allow the moderators or the facilitators to capture the beliefs, opinions, and attitudes of the participants. <coughs> Now, these are often deep multifaceted topics that are not easily captured. You cannot capture those nuances in a simple survey. Now, natural language feedback. Now, like it says, there's nothing more powerful than when you're able to listen to feedback in the customer or the employee's words. You can listen to the unique words they use as well as the tone they use to capture that full picture. Now for the small sample size, that is a disadvantage of the focus group. Usually focus groups are no more than 10 people, maximum 12 people. And as a result, they may not yield statistically significant results. Also, they have limited segment coverage. So because of the costs associated with a focus group, you're limited to a specific number. And so when you look at um, a situation where you have differences across a wide range um, of demographics and psychographic criteria, you may not be able to efficiently get all the information you need with a focus group. Now, it's difficult to capture sensitive topics. Some topics may be seen as sensitive, challenging, embarrassing to talk about in a group setting. Now, people may be unwilling to share their complete feedback and that makes the one-on-one -on -one interview or surveys much more productive. <laughs> now, conducting more effective focus groups, you definitely wanna have a plan, create a context for that focus group. It's important who the facilitator or the recorder would be. And you wanna use tools like mind mapping, affinity diagramming, nominal group technique, Delphi technique. Now, how does a focus group work? You want to determine the topic and goals of the focus group. You want to identify potential participants. You want to prepare a guide that the moderator would use, the moderator guide or discussion guide that outlines the focus group questions. And you want to choose a location for the focus group. You want to recruit six to 12 participants and probably give them an incentive for participating. Conduct a 90 minutes to 120 minute session led by a trained moderator that can bring everyone back to the focus, back to the topic at hand. Then you want to analyze the session and present a thorough written and or oral or verbal report. Mm. Now for surveys and questionnaires. So a survey is a quantitative research method. It's comprised of questionnaires with the intention 
of efficient gathering of data from a set of respondents. Now, a survey would always contain a questionnaire, but a questionnaire doesn't necessarily mean it's a survey. A questionnaire is just a set of questions typically used for research purposes. The questionnaire may or may not be delivered in the form of a survey, but a survey always consists of a questionnaire. Now, the key difference between the survey and questionnaire is that questionnaires are data collection instruments, while surveys are methods for data collection and data analysis. Now, both are relatively inexpensive ways to gather a large amount of data from a large and dispersed group of subjects. The advantages include it's an efficient way to gather a lot of data from a large and dispersed group, and that's also a way to get an answer correct when the answer is survey. Somewhere in the question should talk about large amount of data from a large and dispersed group of subjects, maybe a multinational company. Another advantage is it's easier to quantify data for analysis and reporting. Now the pros, those are the pros, the cons, disadvantages include it can be difficult to obtain an acceptable response rate. It can be difficult to follow up on data from anonymous sources. It relies on self-reporting, which can be biased. And it requires time and statistical expertise to assess, compile, and analyze the data. Now, important considerations when it comes to using surveys and questionnaires as sources of data is it's important to obtain a valid and representative sample, designing the survey with analysis in mind, asking the right questions, questions that reflect appropriate internal and external factors, and are mindful of language and cultural differences. Okay. And now we move to observation as a source of data. <clears throat> Now with observation, you're observing the workplace and the work processes. It mitigates any self-reporting filters or bias that may be present in interviews, surveys, and focus groups. It can strengthen the HR professional's understanding of the work at hand and the culture of the workplace. It allows observers to note factors that participants are unaware of, consider routine, or reluctant to share. The advantages of observation include, it provides first-hand and immediate data rather than self-reported data, which can be affected by memory, subjectivity, and selectivity, given selective information. It is also time efficient for subjects. Now the cons or the disadvantages include, it requires skill to be on scene as an observer, and it requires vigilance to remove personal bias from observations. It requires experience to note significant behaviors, and observations may not be representative of the entire population. Now, existing data sources as a source of data include official documents about the business and culture, performance data from financial records, organizational databases, and HRIS, correspondence and reports, industry data, and benchmarks. Now, the advantages of, exist of using existing data sources include it eliminates the effect of observation and involvement in possible biases, it's a rich multi-perspective source of data. The disadvantages or the cons include, it can be time intensive. It requires experience to extract key data. It may require ingenuity to find data. And here you can also get data in the United States from government establishments like the Bureau of Labor Statistics, where you can get information about labor, um, and about the demographics in labor and much more information um, to be able to use as a source of data. Now, artifact as a source of data, these are objects created by members of a culture 
that convey a sense of that culture's values and priorities, beliefs, habits, rituals, perspectives. It may include physical workspaces, virtual environment. The advantages of using Artifact as a source of data include it provides additional insight into cultural issues. It can be observed with, without the help of those being observed. So you can observe this artifact without the help of those being observed. The cons are it requires researchers to understand the principles of the culture. It can create misunderstandings if the researcher is not familiar with the culture. 